Hey everybody, welcome back. So for those of you that have been keeping up, we're on handling session number nine with the Sri Lankan Python. This is going to be the ninth time having him out. And I want to take some time today to kind of go over some of the other snakes too. Uh, we've got some related species downstairs. We've got the two Burmese pythons. And we're going to go down, we're going to look at how they react and kind of emphasize what the end result is that we're looking for with him. And I've also got another new snake that I got at the same time, a reticulated python, that I want to take out as well just to show that it's not always the just the simple fact that it's a new snake because they're going to adjust at different rates. Uh, some of them are going to come, you know, as soon as you get them, as soon as you bring them home, really handleable. Others, not so much. So we're going to look at that stuff. And I actually noticed my green tree python here left me a shed. Hey, boy. Come on, get out of there. And he's a good boy. He's never taken a swing at me. But it's always good to be careful. Just because. He's got some pretty, pretty big teeth on him. So yeah, I love that. You can always tell a good healthy snake when they give you a good one-piece shed. And he's such a happy boy. He's ready to eat now, I'm sure. So, don't go anywhere. we got a couple things to do today on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. Before we get started, I want to say a huge thank you to all the channel supporters. If you guys out there are interested in helping to support the work that we're doing here, I've always got the Patreon link down in the description. You guys can always like, subscribe, share the videos, and make sure you're jumping down in the comments with any of your ideas, suggestions, thoughts, things like that. So without further ado, let's continue. So a lot of you guys have already seen my little baby Burmese here, but I'm gonna pull her out just to show a snake that's similar size, similar species. Hello, are you gonna come see me? Come on, girl. Come on. Come on. Looks like she's getting ready to go into shed. I'm gonna fill her water up for her too while we're down here. She is nice and warm and soaking. And this is the end result that we're looking for with our Sri Lankan down there. It's about the same size as our little little baby berm right here. And this girl, so sweet. So sweet. You can see from the moment she comes out, she's just exploring. And every now and then, you'll see this in a Sri Lankan. Every now and then, he'll start doing this. You know, you can see she's really relaxed. So this is what we're looking for. And we'll come back down and change your water for you in a little bit. And she's being so nice about it too. Considering she's going in the shed. So let's go over here and we'll look at the uh, adult male berm that we got. Okay, so I think everybody can see me okay. So what we're going to do now is, this is my uh, male Burmese. He's about 12, 13 feet long. And berms aren't too distant relatives from the Sri Lankans. As you can see from the female berm in there, you know, even the pattern looks really similar. But look at this guy. As soon as I walk up to the enclosure, he's following me. And I got to point out too, typically, especially if you're talking about a retic or something like that, and you see this kind of behavior where their head's darting around really quickly, you need to have your snake hook with you. Um, just have it ready. It's a good chance they got a hot food response. This particular animal is different. <laughs> Aren't you, buddy? Aren't you, buddy? I know, you're a special boy. Ain't you? He's a special snake. 
As soon as you see me, you just want to come out and hang out. You know, and when you hear people talk about, you know, choice-based handling and stuff like that, um, that wasn't so much choice-based handling as it was, I demand for you to open this door and let me out based handling. <laughs> he, is, he does this all the time. Every time he sees me walk by the enclosure, he's on point. That's a good boy. You know, book up a little bit. <laughs> so anyway, this is the kind of behavior that you get, raising them up, working with them and so forth. And this is what we're looking for with the Sri Lankan. So let's go on upstairs now. And I want to get out the other snake that we got the same day that we had the Sri Lankan and show just how easy he is to work with by comparison. Now I'll show you guys a little trick too. The other enclosures that I've got, I've made, and I've got the tracks for the doors <clears throat> significantly deeper than the tracks on these plastic of the PVC enclosures. This one, what I had to do is I actually screwed in cabinet handles, and I just run a screw in here, and I tie these down so that they can't get popped out of the track, and I just fashioned a little wedge out of wood, and I put it right up in this track right here, and jams that down. Now this front door right here can't get lifted out of the track because this is a smart snake. Uh, if he gets a wild hair and he decides he wants out, he knows just exactly how to pop that door up. So I've got to secure it like that. Little tip for the day. We're gonna throw in a bonus with the Nile monitor too because it looks like... <laughs> Are you gonna nose dive for me? Come on. Come on, buddy. Come see me. Hey. Hey. What are you doing, stud? What are you doing, stud? Come here. I'm gonna go in here. We'll see how he takes this. Let me make sure we can see him. Being lazy. You're being a lazy boy. How you doing, buddy? Hmm? How you doing, bud? This is what I mean when I go in over the top of his head. He's big enough now to where I really don't want to be going in. Um in front of his mouth, just in case he decides to get a wild hair, try and take a chomp. Look at you, look at you being a good boy. You ready to go back in the tub? <laughs> All right, let's get back upstairs. All right, so if you guys watched the very first video, where I was first getting the uh, Orange Well Phantom Retic and the Sri Lankan up here, both out the same day, you'll see there was a big difference in the behavior. And I wanna take him out, just kind of demonstrate that. And you're gonna see, he's going into shed right now. So they typically will get a little bit grumpy when they're going into shed. And I'm not gonna be as intrusive with him. I'm gonna give him a little bit of time to just kind of figure out what's going on. He's probably back there sleeping and, and not feeling the best right now. So we're gonna give him a second. Okay, right, buddy. Gonna give you a minute. Make sure I don't stress him out. You good, buddy? Here we go. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, just got the hook in there just in case he decided to be a little edgy. And we're going to take him right out. Come on, buddy. I know. We're not going to keep you out long. 
But you can see this is a much more confident animal. It's been handled a lot more. Really comfortable, even though he's in blue and he's getting ready to shed here pretty soon. Such a mellow snake. And this is a male reticulated python. <clears throat> As I said, orange glow phantom. Poss head ocelot. I don't know. I don't have any intention of breeding him anytime soon, so we won't find out. But um, yeah, he is really an awesome animal. And it's nice to have a retic that I can show without um, without having to break my back on a 16 foot animal. <laughs> this guy will hang out with me. Just the best demeanor in the world, especially for a male retic. So let me put him back. Uh, go on, buddy. You did good. Sorry to mess with you. But you gotta let go of me now. I know. I know you don't want to go away. I know you don't want to go home. But you gotta go home. You gotta make a movie, buddy. You gotta take your pissed off cousin out. And you guys will see kind of a weird lock that I've got on there. It's just a metal coat hanger bent over. There's a certain way of bending these so that they'll go right over. Sometimes the traditional locks <clears throat> won't go on these things real easily without really modifying the enclosure. So this right here just slips in, hooks around, the back like that, and it stops the door from opening. So if you guys want to, just to leave this out. If you guys want to, I can, you know, go over how to make those and stuff like that at some point. So, let's go ahead and get to the fun part. Let's see. Getting quite a collection of skin up here, too. I've got a big shed off of my Nile monitor that I brought up. And a section of shed off of my big female retake. do the same thing as before except this time I'm going to keep my hand away from the opening there I'm just going to kind of lift this off of him like this and I'm just going to wait just a second give him a second to kind of chill out I'm going to start getting him used to the hook because as we get through all of this stuff, we're going to be using the hook for feeding, tap training and stuff. And use that. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on, buddy. There you go. Much better. A little bit more wiggling this time, but that's okay. It's okay. No musk yet. That's good. Waiting for him to get a get a base there. Wrap that tail up. Come. On. Come. On, come. On, come on. Got a little bit of moss on his cheek right there. As soon as I get him calmed down and he lets me get over to his face, I'll take that off. Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. See, we got a, a little bit of a fight. We also don't have any musk yet. And since the worst of it appears to be over, I'm guessing we're not gonna get any, which is good. And we can see a little bit. He's just trying to get away now. This isn't necessarily exploring behavior, 
This is, I want to get the hell away from you behavior. But, again, we'll see how it goes. Maybe we'll get lucky and he won't do any biting. But even though we had a little bit of a fight coming out of the gate there, which is kind of be expected, I just pulled the hide off of him. No musk, no bites yet. So, and we'll see how it goes. Well, here we go. Every time he starts hanging that tongue out there and holding it, that means he's not happy and he wants to, uh, he wants to attack something. So, I'm gonna do my best to just kind of calm him down. Move him around. Kind of hanging on down here. I want his body supported gonna make him a lot more comfortable if he doesn't just feel like he's hanging on by his tail. He's actually supported. Not too bad. Not too bad. Still stressed, still huffy. Trying to be extra careful with him because I think it would be freaking amazing to get through a session with no bites. That would make me really happy. No musk, no bites. A little bit of fight coming out of the gate. But um, I think maybe if I'd have been a little bit more patient with him um, and gave him a little bit longer, maybe he would have. Uh, come out without fighting like that uh, that's possible or it's possible he would have just went on a striking frenzy and um, decided to take that approach so it's hard to say but um, <laughs> right, there goes that tongue come on come on we're, and we're gonna go back to the chin scratches already Go back, chin scratches. Are you cool with that? Hmm? Are you gonna be okay with that? Or are you gonna turn around and pop me? And it's not, I mean, you guys have all seen, <clears throat> this is a ninth session of me getting popped by this guy repeatedly. Um, <clears throat> or the first eight, rather. And it's not, it's not that I'm afraid of getting bit. It's that I want to see him relaxed. And if he's not biting, he's a little bit closer to relaxed than if he is biting. So it's his state of mind that I'm more concerned about as far as the biting goes. Um, and like I said, he can take swings at me all day long and I'm gonna be fine. I bleed a little bit. It's all good. But I'm going to start trying to get some get some more stimuli, give him something else to focus on. Okay. You check that out. Still really tense in that neck. Really tense right there. Come on, buddy. I'm gonna let him come in towards me a little bit and see if he takes advantage of the crook of my elbow again like he was before. Go hide. 
Want to go hide for me? Relax. Come on, bud. There you go. Go in there and hide for a minute. That'd be a nice, safe way to get that mo that moss off of his face too. <laughs> That way he can get it off of there, just rubbing it on my shirt, and I don't have to stick my finger up there in front of his eyeball, stress him out. There you go. Well, well, come on now. <laughs> Checking stuff out. So far, so good. I know you. Guy, you want up there so bad. I want to let you up there so bad. But we're just not there yet, little buddy. And of course, he's trying to get up a little bit higher. He's going to be a lot more comfortable up higher like that instead of feeling like I'm hovering over him. But let's see. I'm pick him up a little bit. See if that changes his demeanor a little bit. I know one thing that it does, it gives him a whole lot better angle at my face, which I'm not a fan of. <laughs> Just part of the reason why I don't hang him up like that. Because it is a little bit harder to protect your face when you've got him extended like that. But, Yeah, right now, man, so far so good. We've be, we've went beyond the point where the other handling sessions he would have been biting. And that's not to say I'm not gonna make a mistake here somewhere and move the wrong way or do something that spooks him and get bit, but See if I can get this stuff off of his. Okay. <laughs> How is that stuff stuck on your face, bud? Ah, we got it. Okay. Got a little bit of running slash exploring behavior. Uh-oh. <laughs> Green tree pythons out now too. Okay. I am really impressed with that because I screwed up while I was wiping the sweat off my brow dropped him. You're so intent on getting up here, bud. I know. We're getting close. You haven't bit me yet. Getting really close. Yep. Come on. See, one thing that he's not doing now that he was doing before is he doesn't have that death grip with his tail, which means he's a little bit more confident. Um, you know, after enough of these interactions, <clears throat> we was talking about this in the chat the other day, 
you know, enough of these interactions, he's starting to learn that he doesn't have to be afraid of me. Um, I think he's fairly certain that I'm not going to kill him at this point. But he is still grumpy. He wants to be the boss. He has no desire to do what I ask him to right now. But, and him moving around like this so far, so far this is pretty good. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. <laughs> Come on, bud. You're okay. You're okay. back under him just going right up under his head sneak it up there sneak that support back up to him <sighs> okay Let's go up and see if you can say hi again what do you think you want to check out the phone huh? do you want to check it out hopefully we get a little bit of focus I'm trying to stay out of it so we can there we go <laughs> hey, you're doing so good, bud. Doing so good. Still a little bit stressed out, but Come on. trying to mess with him just a little bit, just enough to get his head out of that really stressed out position right there before I put him back in the enclosure. And we're going to have probably one more handling session tomorrow. And, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and try and get him fed this weekend. I'm thinking we might get lucky. I think he may I think he may take a meal for us this weekend. That's my hope. Because I'm not going to uh, count my chickens before they hatch. But I am trying everything with him. I've got rodents, I've got small rabbits, and I've got chicks. So whatever it is that he decides he wants to take, he's got available to him. And then I will just continue to feed him whichever one he chooses. <clears throat> and then offer other stuff as we go, as he gets more comfortable. There you go, bud. There you go. See? We've still got a tense little neck there, but every now and then we're seeing some longer tongue flicks. Starting to check stuff out. There we go. Yeah, stuff just like that. He's still a bit stressed out. Just like anything else, it's a work in progress, takes patience. There you go. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. Good boy. Like I said, we definitely want to get all of this stuff out of his system before he gets six, eight feet long. And um, it goes from, you know, having to wipe down your arms when you're done to having to bandage your arms when you're done. And we don't want to do that if we don't have to. There you go, bud. Just relax a little bit. We got gotcha. you. Right, I'm going to go ahead and put his stuff back in there since he's done so well. I did have somebody make the comment that they thought that I should be 
taking everything except his water bowl out of the hide and taking her out of his enclosure and taking a hide out of there. Definitely don't want to do that. Not when these guys are this scared, <clears throat> you know. Um, there's there's such a thing as forced handling like this, where you know we're teaching them that they're <clears throat> not going to get hurt and so forth. But you know they've got to have some time to feel secure, and you know they've got to have that hide. They've got to have that time to just relax and feel like they're at home um, instead of being completely on edge all the time. So. You know, when you do get a newer snake, always have a hide of some sort in there. You know, even if it's just something for them to hide behind, where they don't feel like they're so exposed, you know, just like the, the foliage that I put in there, then, you know, that works too. You know? And I know I'm going to be putting probably some moss, much like I've got in the uh, in a green tree pythons enclosure. Probably going to be putting that in these enclosures too, because I'm finding up here it's really difficult to keep the humidity up. Um, I've got to do a lot of spraying in here in order to keep this, keep this humidity level up. We're going to see. You want to go home? You want to go home, buddy? You can go home. You don't have to hang out with me anymore if you don't want to. You can run, you can run, you can hide, you can do whatever you want. Come on. There you go, bud. So it wasn't perfect, no musk, no bites. Uh, really happy with this and I'm really happy with the fact that he's coming up to the glass now. <clears throat> you know, he wasn't so quick to just run away from me as soon as I put him over there. And I mean, this is the kind of behavior that I see out of my little uh, baby berm downstairs, you know, riding the glass like that. This is good, you know. Like I said, he's not. That makes me really excited to see that he didn't run away from me, he didn't bite, he didn't musk, and he's sitting at the glass now. <laughs> if he wasn't so mellow right now, I would really go for it, open the door back up, and see if I could get him to crawl back out on me. But I <clears throat> want to kind of leave well enough alone. He's comfortable. We interacted. He went in there, now he sees me here. Um, it's just, this is really cool. This is a big step for him. Um, really big step for him going in there and not running straight away and hiding. So, leaving himself exposed next to the glass like that. Really like it. So, I'm not going to sit here and bump my gums too long. Um, I want to go ahead and get this out. It's like 10 till 6 Eastern time right here. Typically takes like two hours almost between editing and getting this thing uploaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this out, do a live chat tonight with it. Um, so let me get busy and I'll see you guys next time on Intrepid Exotics.